Hello, Joanna Newsom fans. Good day to you, and to everybody else, shut up. Here we go, Big Muff. We're doing a Big Muff, this is the mid 70s or early 70s version. This is the Big Muff pie, this is photo up here. I got this off of www.bigmuffpage.com, which is a bananas excellent uh, resource for uh, all your Big Muff stuff. They've got schematics for every single version. And even in the schematics, look at this, they got all these little notes. These filter caps are uh, 560 puff in some early versions. And then this is sometimes not a 10K, it's a 10.6K, which, holy crap, how would you ever even know that, you know? What's the difference in the circuit? It's almost nothing. Uh, yeah, so this is an, uh, bigmuffpage.com is just a crazy good resource if you're interested in muffs, uh, which you, uh, I suspect you are if you're watching this video. So, let's get into it. First, we'll talk about our input stage. So, uh, well, actually first, this yellow line up here is all nine volts. It's kind of an old school way of doing it. Instead of just putting like nine volts at the top of these resistors, they connect them all, they are connected, so whatever, that's nine volts. All right, our input stage is, uh, this is what we call a common emitter amplifier. So, uh, everything to the left of this, basically. This is all a common emitter amplifier, uh, with a slight variation on it here, but let's, we'll get to that in chronological order. Your guitar input hits this, uh, filter coming in. This is kind of a low input impedance. Uh, um, normally you'd see that in like the 100k or, or higher if you if you can get it, you know, high input impedance, low output impedance, that's what you want. Uh, it's not crazy low, but it's a little low. Anyway, this creates a high pass filter with this capacitor that cuts uh, low stuff, but below human hearing. I think this is around 10 hertz, and human hearing starts at about 20 hertz. It goes from 20 to 20,000 hertz. Um, yeah, so then we have our common emitter amplifier. Now, a common emitter, emitter amp typically will not have these two components here, and will also often have a capacitor to ground in parallel with this R22. Um, not all the time, but often. So that's our sort of main difference here. Now what these uh, parts do that are in here that aren't normally in here, the R9 and, R and C10. Um, so R9 is, uh, is feedback, right? Between our output, which is coming from this collector, collector of the BJT here, and the base. There's a little feedback there. This is what we call a voltage shunt. Um, and it, it does, it lowers the gain, so I'm not going to do out the equation for gain because it's a big pain in the butt. Um, yeah, so that'll lower the gain, but you get increase in, um, like stability and, uh, accuracy. So they would call it, it lowers distortion levels, but that doesn't mean distortion like guitar players mean, like clipping. That means that it's uh, more accurately reproduces the signal that it's trying to amplify. Uh... Yeah, so C10 um, is acting as a, uh, let me just get this right, low pass filter. I always get those two words switched up in my head. It's acting as a low pass filter. Uh, it's actually cutting a surprising amount. I think the center frequency on this guy is about one kilohertz. So uh, yeah, it's cutting a lot of highs, pretty much all of the highs before you hit the uh, clipping stages later, um, which will, We'll get to. Um, yeah, so that's what you got. Your guitar signal comes in, it gets amplified up a significant amount, filtered, uh, lots of the highs come out, a small amount of lows, probably stuff you can't hear, comes out. And then it gets passed down the signal chain through this filter here. I like, oh man, they're color coordinated. I hadn't realized that before. So the green stage is basically just a volume cut from our output of this uh, uh, common emitter amplifier. This guy amplifies it up a bunch. This guy then cuts it down to uh, the level that will be handy for clipping. This 
potentiometer you can think of as a, uh, a voltage divider is the word. Um, and yeah, let me just, uh, let's do it this way. I'll give you the equation for voltage dividers since they are handy. Voltage out uh, is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2, oops, <laughs> uh, times the voltage in. And just to be clear about this, uh, we'll draw it like this. So this is, uh, well, I shouldn't write V plus, this is V in. Uh, we got R1, we got R2, and then right there will be V out. So if you think about the uh, circuit, basically this is lowering the, or raising actually, the minimum that this uh, potentiometer can be turned down to, right? So instead of being able to turn this pot all the way down to ground, the lowest you can turn it is uh, to one, one K. Uh, so if you wanted to mod this guy, that might be an interesting place to start. Maybe like replace this like with a, with a hundred ohm pot. Cause I'll tell you what, I think I might be in the minority of this, but with, uh, with big muffs, I really like the sound of turning the sustain almost all the way or all the way down and then trying to make up the gain at the output by turning the volume all the way up. Um, yeah, that's not how most people use their big muffs. I think most people get a big muff because it sounds real big and nasty, but uh, it'll be interesting, you know, nice to get a little uh, options in there, you know? Anywho, moving on from our sustained phase, we get into the business side. So from here all the way over to here, this is, our clipping section uh, looks big, but once we dive in, uh, it's actually not that complicated. So right here, basically this is two identical stages, right? There's one here and then a copy of it here that's identical. Um, so what these guys are doing is it's another uh, common emitter amplifier, just like over here, right? We even have the same uh, feedback or voltage shunt going on. Same uh, capacitor here, which is again filtering uh, at the, filtering out the highs at, uh, this will be about 1K. Uh, that's the EQ curve. I don't know why I thought that would be helpful. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so that, uh, that's filtering out 1K. A lot of highs getting filtered out in this guy. But the thing about clipping is that it generates a lot of highs. So it's good to go in there without a lot of highs, right? That's what this guy does here. And then we're filtering out some highs again, right there. Um, now the real business happens here. These are small signal diodes, 1N914s, um, similar to what's in the RAT. The, what are those, 1N5852s? I think I got that number wrong, but it's something like that. They sound really similar. You can kind of switch them out. They're not that different. Uh, they are a little different, but not that much. So anyway, this is basically um, soft clipping, like in an overdrive, right? With an overdrive, you use like a, a an op amp, you know, where the, the clipping will be <laughs> in the filter, or in the feedback loop. That's what that looks like. That's a feedback loop. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's basically what's going on here. We have soft clipping in this stage. Um, because these diodes have a forward uh, voltage bias, right? They will not uh, uh, conduct until you hit their forward voltage bias, which is at approximately 0 0.06 or 0 0.07 volts. Um, and there's two of them so that uh, AC can pass both ways, right? If you only had one diode here, your uh, signal would only get clipped on one side of the waveform. It would not get clipped down there. So the other diode clips over here. Um, yeah. And just to, just because it's cool, uh, soft, I'm gonna go back over here. Uh, soft clipping is different than hard clipping in that, okay, well, first of all, there's usually some kind of amp. And like I was saying, you get uh, diodes in the feedback loop of that amp. Uh, those are diodes, don't worry about it. Um, and I'm using this as, this is a generic amp, 
right? This is our common emitter here. You can use op amps too. It looks like an op amp, I realize that I'm trying to, whatever, you get what I'm saying. Uh, now, hard clipping is we, when you get diodes down to ground. Oops, that should be the other way around, whatever. When you get diodes down to ground instead of diodes in this feedback loop, this is hard clipping. And uh, the difference in the waveforms is that uh, when you get soft clipping, you kind of get these sort of softer edges around the thing. There's like a curve right here and right here. Um, and it's a little smoother. Uh, yeah, and sometimes it almost seems like there's kind of a, uh, like an angle to it, like that. At least in my experience. But uh, I don't see that typified in online examples, so that might just be how my mileage has been differing, as they say. And anyway, uh, hard clipping will get a much more uh, sort of flat and aggressive clipping like that, right? Where the waveform wants to keep going like this, but it gets uh, chopped hard, right? So the fact that um, this Big Muff is doing uh, soft clipping two times gets you closer to hard clipping, but it uh, sounds way different, you know? Big Muff is a really interesting circuit. It's kind of unique, at least in my estimation. I haven't seen many others that do this sort of double soft clipping over transistors. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I said so, but these caps, C6 and 7, um, basically they, they make it so that you can have this clipping, but you won't get um, like bias information, right? This this is biased to ground through R16. And this is biased to our positive voltage over here, this side. So you don't wanna mix those, you wanna keep the biasing good. So uh, this capacitor stops the DC stuff from going and allows the AC stuff, right? The audio that we want. Yeah. Um, let's see, is there anything else I missed about these guys? Oh, there's some low filtering, right? Uh, C, uh, uh, yeah, 13. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of low filtering. Again, not super, uh, not a big problem out uh, here as well. Uh, it's, not, it's not a huge deal. Mostly it's cutting stuff below human hearing, I believe. Uh, if you want to fact check me on that, um, oh, let me just pull this up again. Uh, here's the here's the equation to find the center frequency of a uh, filter. Center frequency is equal to. Let me just check my notes so I don't get it wrong. I'm pretty sure I know it though. Yeah, one over two pi times R C. Uh, yeah. There we go, we got our input, we got our sustain, we got our clipping stuff. Now here we hit some really interesting stuff. This is the uh, tone section, super cool. So, you know, it's convenient that I just, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna redraw it just because I think it'll help illustrate it. Um, so basically, here we have a low pass filter and then here we have a high pass filter, right? This is like the same um, structure. You just swap the capacitor and the resistor, right? But what these guys do with the Big Muff is they kind of uh, give you a mix of them, right? So this potentiometer means that on the output, if you have it all the way extreme, you'll get one of these filters. Right, which will either be uh, cutting, let me think about it, the highs here or the lows here. And as you bring it to the middle, you actually blend the two of them. So you get this filtering shape where you get the high cut on this side and the low cut on this side. And you end up with this cool like notch thing going on, right? And this is right around 1K. Um, oh, wait, I have a cool, yeah, there we go, check it out. So yeah, if you have it turned all the way to the left and you have, it's all um, high pass filter or full base, right? You get this blue curve extreme on the other side, gives you this uh, red curve. But check out 
the middle positions, right? You just get this like notch here. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, so if, it's a little sketchy, but if you look at it here, here's our high pass filter, right? Capacitor with a resistor to ground. And we're taking our output over here. And then here's the opposite structure, resistor with a capacitor to ground, right? That's our low pass filter. And then we mix them right there. And this looks like a mess, so I'm gonna clear it out. Yeah, so that's a very cool tone circuit. I don't know if I know any other circuits, any other pedals that do that. That's cool. Uh, yeah, all right, so lastly, we hit our output stage. Um, go away. So all of this stuff over here is our output stage. Um, this is uh, an actually, this is actually a standard uh, common emitter amplifier. Um, yeah, just like I was saying earlier, this guy is a common emitter, but it is a little atypical because of these guys. And then I also said there's sometimes a little cap to ground that would be over here, a little cap to ground. Uh, but this guy doesn't have that. Um, yeah, otherwise standard common emitter amplifier. Uh, yeah, this one is actually easy to do the calculations for gain, so I'll give you that, why not? Um, yeah, so get out of my way. Uh, yeah, so the gain, AV, or, you know, you'll see that as G, V as well. Uh, is equal to RC, which stands for collector, and RE, which stands for emitter, right? Uh, so the collector is this guy without the arrow. So this right here is our RC, which is 15K, which is equal to <laughs> 15K. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is divided by, not multiplied. My bad. Uh, 15k by, this is our RE down here, R4, uh, which is 3.3k, there's a point in there, 3.3k, which is equal to approximate, uh, that's what, 4.5, 4.5, yeah, so there is a lot of gain here, well, not a lot of gain, but there is some gain here, uh, probably to compensate for the tone, uh, because, yeah, those filters don't just, well, they do just remove those frequencies, but those frequencies contribute to your volume. So as you filter stuff out, you get quieter. So this amp brings that gain, uh, brings some gain in there to uh, compensate. And then right here we have another, uh, you know, bog standard voltage divider, uh, just like we had right there. Uh, the only difference being you can actually turn this one all the way down to zero where this guy has that 1K that prevents it. Uh, yeah, let's see, is there anything else I wanted to? Um, yeah, and there's no feedback resistor like over here, right? The, the voltage shunt would be here if we we're gonna copy it like these other earlier stages, but they didn't do that here. Um, yep, I think that's it. Is there anything else I missed? Oh, this cap right here is just to, uh, sort of solidify this positive nine volts against like sudden changes in voltage, right? If you have a sudden current draw or sudden power draw, this guy will sort of act like a battery to keep the voltage stable, basically. Um, yeah, and then this guy right here is like a real cheap fuse. <laughs> so if you accidentally plug in too much power, uh, this this uh, resistor will fry. It'll it'll die. It'll sacrifice itself for the greater good and save the rest of your circuit. Um, which, by the way, that's a great that's a great trick if you're gonna DIY stuff. You know, because it's really easy to plug in power backwards or just screw something up. So that it's just dead. You know, in the finished product, it feels a little cheap. But uh, when you're doing it yourself on your bench, that's a great way to. Uh, you know, just like a real low resistor. If you have like 47 ohms, that's great. 10 ohms, whatever. Just super low so that, it, you know, resistors are so cheap. It's fine if that one dies. Yeah. Um, I think that's it for the Big Muff. I hope you enjoyed this. And, uh, you know, congrats, you're smarter than you was before we started this. 
Yeah, and again, BigMuffPage.com. This is our guy right here. Excellent stuff, BigMuffPage.com. Uh, yep, and thanks to Kit Ray, who, I don't know if that is Big Muff Page. I don't know who these people are, but if, you're, if your name is Kit, you did a good thing. Thank you for what you've done. Yep, all right. Goodbye, Joanna Newsom fans. Go to hell, everybody else.